I clickbaited you. This video is not going to be showing you 5 mods to reinstall Fallout 4. In reality, this video is more 8 or 9 mods that will make you want to reinstall Fallout 4. Think of it as 5 ideas, 5 concepts, and then a few mods that fill out those concepts that will probably make you want to reinstall Fallout 4. A lot of people complain that Fallout 4 isn't the best Fallout. A lot of people even say it's the worst Fallout available right now. Whether you agree with that, disagree with that, or just think Fallout New Vegas is a better RPG, that's okay because Fallout 4 has more mods than any other Fallout game right now. It's one of the reasons my channel is so popular, there's consistently new mods coming out at an unprecedented level even compared to some other games like Skyrim and Fallout New Vegas. This is both good and bad because obviously there's a lot of mods out there. Whether you're somebody who follows content in Fallout 4 modding all the time, or maybe just stumbled upon this video randomly, what I'm going to be showing you today are what in my opinion are a bundle of mods that will actually get you to reinstall Fallout 4 if you haven't been playing it for a while. If you already have it installed, hey just download these mods, start out a new save, and I think you're going to have have a pretty good time, at least for a few hours. With all that being said, if you guys enjoy the content, you can obviously leave a like or a comment on this video. It helps boost its rating system within YouTube's algorithm. That's how they kind of evaluate, hey, should people be looking at this? There's a lot of likes and a lot of audience engagement through the comments. YouTube's robot's like, hey, that's a good one. Let's promote that. In addition, I do have a merch store, which is linked down below if you want to support the channel in a further way. With that being said, let's just jump into the video. What a better mod to start this video off than Start Me Up. Start Me Up is something I've talked about a lot on my channel, and I feel like it really is one of the best mods for Fallout 4 when starting a new playthrough or reinstalling the game. This mod is very versatile. Basically, after starting a new game now, you're going to have three options. Either A, go through the intro of Fallout 4 like you would in any other game. Two, skip the intro and just start off in the cryopod so you don't have to deal with all that mumbo jumbo. Or three, the most interesting option, actually start off in a new place with varying degrees of equipment in Fallout 4's world. There's a few different variables you can actually configure here. You can choose these standard stuff like your special stats and things like that, but also what kind of equipment you're going to spawn with, where you're going to spawn, and how much of that equipment. So if you want to start off the game with a little bit of a jump start, having plenty of gear, ammo, weapons, things like that, you can choose to do that here. But at the same time, if you want to have a super difficult start, you can have next to nothing when spawning. Even beyond that, again, you actually can choose where in the commonwealth. Some of these places are not specific, a ranger cabin. Where is that ranger cabin? Well, you're going to have to find out after you spawn. As well as you could choose which profession you did have, so you could have different loadouts, whether you be a doctor and have a ton of medical supplies, a rich guy that's relatively weak but with a ton of caps on him, the possibilities here are also quite extensive. But one of my favorite new features added to this mod is actually the ability to choose which level you will spawn at. This is awesome because typically the first 5 to 10 levels in Fallout 4 are no super way. tedious. If you play through the game multiple times like me, you know it's just kind of a grind to get through those first 5 to 10 levels, be able to actually do some of the different crafting and things like that. This mod's going to let you bypass all of that also. But I feel like Start Me Up is actually best used in addition to survival options. This is going to be a mod that allows you to customize many of the different options with survival mode in Fallout 4. If you're not playing on survival mode, I think you're making a mistake. I feel like it's one of the only true ways to experience the game. And this mod's going to let you actually configure every aspect of that. Maybe you think having to drink water every so often is actually just really a nuisance and you only like having to eat and sleep. You could do that here. Maybe you feel like you have to eat too often. You could turn down the ratio as to how often that'll pop up. Or you could even make the food count for twice as much so it'll hold you off for longer. This is a very versatile and powerful mod. One of my favorite configurations that again I've talked about a lot on this channel is actually with the damage. I love having enemies do a lot of damage to me but also me do a lot of damage to them in turn. So oftentimes you will one shot each other and either you're going to get one shot right away or you'll get the drop on them and actually be able to take down a whole squad very quickly. It creates for really tense and exciting gameplay and that coupled with Fallout 4's advanced combat really makes for an amazing experience in Fallout 4. Again, using these two mods in tandem could really start you off in a great situation. Have some of those necessary supplies so you could just jump into questing and start experiencing the story or a new mod you just downloaded. As fun as those mods are, after the first few levels, you largely will be back into vanilla Fallout. It helps you get a little bit of a jump start, and it can modify some of the underlying settings, but the quests, the experiences, the perks, everything like that will be exactly the same. Unless you download this other mod called Be Exceptional. This is a really cool mod using the Level Up Menu EX's framework, 
More or less, it's going to bring back the perk and trait style you did have in Fallout New Vegas and Fallout 3 into Fallout 4. A very large and controversial change in Fallout 4 was that new perk menu. People didn't like the combination, how everything was tied together, and this is going to be more of a hybrid than that. It's not an exact recreation of Fallout New Vegas's, but it's kind of a, it's also obviously not the same thing as vanilla Fallout 4. Personally, I really like this. It separates skills and perks into a really cool system and actually adds in some of its own perks. Even beyond that, it actually makes some modifications to some of those tedious kind of required perks like local leader, things that you pretty much have to get every playthrough if you want to build in settlements or craft things. I've been using this a lot since it came out a few months ago and it truly does create for a very different playthrough. Now, instead of having to put a bunch of perks into armor, you have to level up your engineering stat. It's way more versatile and flexible. You could truly kind of customize your character in a more in-depth way. You're not kind of confined to going down one individual special tree like you are in Vanilla Fallout 4. In addition, I'm technically only showing you one option. The level up menu EX is what creates this new menu. Be exceptional is just one mod taking advantage of that. There's other things that add in totally new and redefined perks that you can actually experience Fallout 4 with and gets rid of a lot of the vanilla options if you want a true different experience. Be Exceptional is more of a hybrid between a new experience and still maintaining some of Fallout 4's vanilla perks. Alright, so now we created a pretty good framework for actually the fundamentals of the game being a bit different. But how about your interactions and experiences with other people? Well, for that, I actually have three mods to show you, the first of which is going to be the Raider Overhaul. What this is going to do is, well, as you can guess, overhaul the Raiders in Fallout 4. They're levelless and the equipment they spawn with is going to be totally transformed. After installing this mod, you quickly realize that you encounter Raiders all the time, and in Vanilla Fallout 4, they get super redundant. If you play the game multiple times, that's only going to be furthered. This mod's going to add in a ton of new unique equipment that they spawn with, but also new attachments to vanilla equipment that the raiders will use specifically. It also brings to the table some new power armors and even dog armors, all the while it's still maintaining that traditional raider look and feel. It doesn't feel like a new faction or a totally redefined faction, it just looks like it's a refreshed faction. The raiders got some new armors that still look pretty crappy, but are different than vanilla Fallout 4. But also to address the raiders big brother, you also do have the mercenary pack. This is going to add in a ton of armors that are only usable by the player not actually integrated into the level list, but by far my favorite aspect of this mod is how it changes the gunners in Fallout 4. It gives them a ton of new accessories as well as base armors for them to use. If you see a high level gunner now, instead of that ugly and traditional combat armor, he'll probably be in a full set of ballistic armor which just looks way more daunting and cool. In addition of course you can actually loot this off of those guys and use it on yourself, except there's a different variant that the gunners carry and that is kind of intended for the player, so their variant's a bit weaker than the one you can get yourself. This is a pretty old mod actually one of the oldest ones on this list, but it's another essential that if you're starting a new playthrough and you want to really change the look and feel of the game, it's going to be a great one to download. And then finally, with the newest, we do have the militarized Minutemen. As you could guess, it's going to turn the Minutemen into a true military. I feel like this, out of the three mods, is probably the most dramatic change. It makes the Minutemen go from looking like a bunch of colonial dressed settlers to an actual military. It adds in a ton of new classes, so as you get into higher levels and the Minutemen get stronger, you're going to see those new classes appearing at your settlements, and of course, when you use those signal flares. This coupled with a mod like FCOM that actually allows you to have little squads following you around can create a really diversive and cool experience in Fallout 4. It's awesome to run around with these guys behind you because they do look like a true military styled squad. Again, this is a pretty new mod, so you may have missed it, and if you have, then it's definitely worth a download. This alone probably got a lot of people to re-download Fallout 4, because the Minutemen are such a core faction in the game. If you want to use settlements, you kind of have to side with the Minutemen, and this actually makes them a pretty cool faction to side with. So next we do have Horizon. It's probably the biggest mod on this list. Arguably, it's definitely in combat with the final one. But this is going to bring to the table a lot of changes that make Fallout 4 significantly more difficult and also just change a lot of the fundamental systems in the game. It's one of those mods that's really hard to describe in like a one to two minute video because it really affects so many different assets and facets in Fallout 4. But overall, the idea behind Horizon is that it's meant to be used on survival mode first off and in addition to actually make the game significantly more difficult. But even beyond that, it's actually meant to make things like caps be valuable. Even if you're later in the game or middle way through the game, you're going to have to struggle to find caps. You're going to value your caps much more, but they're also going to have more value. They're going to be more functioning. There's many different and new items that you can craft. There's also a whole plethora of new crafting tables that you can get through this. You can upgrade your settlers. You can change your ammo on the fly. You can actually kit out settlers by default. So just kind of assign, okay, these settlers are going to have this loadout. It also has a pretty big effect on the perks in Fallout 4. 
It's going to make it so certain things are hidden behind certain perks, giving way more value to those perks, as well as just modifying some of the different effects of different perks in Fallout 4. If you're looking for a truly new experience in Fallout 4, this is going to be a great mod to download. This is a true, like, you could start a new playthrough with just this mod installed, and you're going to feel a different game. In the background, I'm actually showing you a video by another YouTuber. I'm going to have that video linked down below. It's more or less a get started guide for Horizon. If you're interested in the mod or thinking about it, I would recommend watching that video. It's a very, very in-depth mod, and his channel in general is a great resource for that. I've only played Horizon a few times, not nearly as well informed as that YouTuber. So if me talking about it has made you even a little bit interested, check out his channel, watch some of his playthroughs of Horizon. You should pretty quickly get a feel for what the mod's all about, and then you'll have a very long time reading through the things and getting to all the different intricacies of it. And last but not least, we have what is arguably one of the most popular mods for Fallout 4, and that's going to be Sim Settlements. If you somehow never heard of this mod, well, it's a big one. More or less, what this is going to do is overhaul settlement mode in Fallout 4. Put simply, now you can place down these little plots that settlers will automatically build in. There's a few different types of plots. There's martial plots, recreational plots, residential plots, agricultural plots, industrial plots, and commercial plots. Many of those do exactly what the title of them suggest. A residential plot is a house that a settler will build and then live in. Again, all this is done automatically. You place the plot down and a settler will, if you have it set up that way, automatically be assigned to it and start building off of one of the random schematics that you do have installed. And we'll get more into that in a second. But from there, there's other requirements. If you want to get that residential plot to a level two, you're going to need certain things, including defense, power, as well as certain commercial plots. So those settlers actually have jobs and thus higher affluence. So they can upgrade their homes and then the home will physically change in size and the way it looks. There's even further intricacies, like each of these individual plots actually have different themes about them. So as they upgrade, you're going to see that theme be carried out even as the structure changes in shape. And even beyond all of that, this is a mod that has its base mod two expansions by the mod author. That being Industrial Revolution, which expands the industrial plots to also have... Some other options going in the industrial aspect of this and actually collecting scraps for your settlements, but also Rise of the Commonwealth, which is by far my favorite. What that's going to allow you to do is more or less set up a fully functioning settlement, and you are totally hands off. It's like a mini town, they'll recruit settlers on their own, they're going to build up houses on their own. It's really freaking cool, and it's one of those things that you have to experience. That's the most latest one, so if you haven't been following Sim Settlements over the past two to three months, I would re-download it, re-download Fallout 4, and get that new expansion because it's freaking awesome. But even beyond all of that, Sim Settlements also has a massive modding community even within its regular mod. People could create different schematics for different houses or any of the other plots to be built on. Even now, they can actually create different city schematics. So when you're using Rise of the Commonwealth and a city is being built up, it can be something that someone created and it could look pretty freaking cool. This is another mod that there's a ton of depth to. There's entire forums dedicated to this one, just like Horizon, as well as other mods based around Sim Settlements itself. This is another one that if you guys want to find out more about it, King Gath has a channel. He has a quick start guide and produces content pretty regularly about the mod himself. He's actually the mod author behind it. And yeah, it's a big one. It's really an augmentation of Fallout 4, while Horizon's more of an overhaul of many of the fundamental systems. In Sim Settlements, you can largely play Fallout 4's questing and things like that the same way. And the settlement system is largely exactly the same. You just have this as another option as to how you want to go through with settlements. So that's pretty much going to wrap it up for this video. Hopefully you guys watching this, if you aren't an active user of Fallout 4, saw at least one of these mods and was like, you know what, that sounds like a great time and I want to reinstall the game for that. If you're already an active player, maybe this inspired you to start a new playthrough to try out some of these new mods, Horizon especially, really benefits from you starting out a new playthrough and just jumping to that mod for the first time. It's a truly great experience. And even though there's a lot of depth to it, there's a lot of guides out there that can make it fairly easy to understand. But as always, at the end of my video, we do have a psychology fun fact of the day. And today we're actually going to be talking a little bit about how mood affects your decision making, your memory, and just a lot of other facets in your life. So your mood, whether it be happy, sad, angry, excited, etc., actually affects two major things. First and foremost, your decision making. This one seems fairly obvious. If you're in a really good mood, maybe you're going to be more courteous to people. If you're in a really bad mood, maybe you're going to like blow off the guy and give him a bad tip. But in addition, it actually affects your memory also. This is called mood congruent memory. And more or less, you're going to be more likely to remember things that are in the same mood as you are currently. So let's say you're really mad at your boyfriend or girlfriend. You're going to be way more likely to remember other times you were really mad at them in that instance. It's somewhat dangerous because if you're fighting a lot at a certain time, you may think, oh, this is my entire relationship because you're thinking about those instances way more than the happy instances due to mood congruent memory. But at the same time, maybe now if you're watching this video, you'll think about that and be like, oh, maybe I should, you know, take a step back, calm down and think about all the other times, the happier times we have had. 
relationship advice at the end of a fallout video what is better than that as always again thank you guys for watching i do hope you enjoyed this one in addition i'm actually going to link a really old video i used to do before like fallout 4 modding as much fallout 4 battles where it'd be like two people against each other or two factions against each other this is before my channel got really large so many of them only have like 1,000 views which is a lot but compared to what my videos do nowadays it's fairly small and i don't know i just figured i'd link one of these at the end as always again thank you guys for watching i hope you enjoyed and i hope to see you all next time later